According to Realtor.com, 44 out of the 50 largest metro areas in the United States, rents have surpassed pre-pandemic levels. And not only that, rent prices have soared 9.2% in the first half of 2021, tripling the average pace and, of course, exceeding the pre-crisis rent levels. With that said, guys, my name is Daniel Kwok. And this is Sam. And we are the, the Kwok, Kwok Brothers. Brothers. So after a year-long worth of pandemic and now we're starting to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, one would have to wonder, is the rent rates continue going to increase? So we're going to talk about, first of all, what is the cost of the rent rate increasing and what could possibly happen? Are we going to see a cool off or are we going to continue to see a skyrocket? And last but not least, we're going to talk about some of the effects that could happen, whether the rents will continue to go up or we will see rents go down. So the million dollar question, of course, yeah. is what's causing these rents to increase? Now, I've said it. He said it. Mm -hmm. We've been saying this the last 18 months that the housing shortage, the affordability crisis is something that was already a problem before right. the pandemic even happened. And of course, with all the eviction moratoriums and all the you know government stimulus that's been happening this is for me a no-brainer yeah right? but of course what is what are the other things that's causing the rents to rise well, so quickly I, I think the per perpetrator in this is that it's simple it's housing shortage again we've been quoting the stat over and over again 5.5 million housing shortage and hopefully that's going down we're seeing a lot of uh, home buyers that are sidelined and they can't buy homes because there's not enough homes and they're getting outbid so a lot of these would have been homeowners are now renting or choosing to rent because they have to go somewhere. My theory is that a lot of people moving out of their home state into places like Texas, Tennessee, Florida, um, these states are experiencing unprecedented amount of demands and homeowners wanted to come and, and buy. Now, of course, there's not enough supply with, you know, overpouring amount of population coming in. I would imagine that you know, instead of being able to buy a home, they're choosing to rent instead. I mean, here's another data for you, right? California lost an incredible amount of population. Texas gained quite a bit, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. That data is also correlated by the fact that if you look at the House of Representatives, Texas gained a few more seats, mm -hmm. which indicates that there's a population increase in that state. Yeah, but one also have to wonder as well, in our home state of Illinois, where we're filming this right now, rents are increasing dramatically, mm -hmm. but yet we're one of the largest states when it comes to population loss, right? right. I mean, we're literally really top three in terms of individuals, especially our age in the millennial crowd, right. moving out. So it's happening everywhere. As we said in the beginning of the video, 44 out of 50, the largest metros in the United States yeah. are increasing in rents. I mean, for me, I think this is the domino effect, yeah. right? No, but here's, here's the counter, I guess, argument that mm -hmm. we, someone can make against that is, well, are we seeing increase because in the last you know 12 months, we pretty much been stagnant that there's been no movements, no one wanted to move, it's COVID, right? Everyone's staying put. Um, we didn't see a whole lot of activity as far as people looking for uh, new homes. Is it arguably, could be it could it be arguably true that we're seeing, we're now just seeing the increase because we haven't seen anything last year? Well, yeah, I mean, to that argument, I would actually say, you know, how is that possible? Because we're obviously seeing record numbers, we're extremely high numbers of transactional volume that's happening mm -hmm. in the housing market, right? Everybody wants to sell their home right now because, you know, the housing prices are so high. And, you know, I get that this whole low inventory thing, but truth be told, that the inventory this year in terms of the amount of homes available for sale is actually the same as last year, the year before. It's just that homes are flying off the shelves a lot faster. Yeah. So a lot of times when that happens, people struggle to find places to live. Sure. So, you know, a lot of these individuals, in my opinion, the reason why rents have gone up so much is because, well, for one, we mentioned that the affordable housing crisis that was here mm -hmm. before, but the amount of individuals, especially in states like Illinois, because that is what we're talking about, that are looking for these short-term leases, yeah. these three to six month leases, six to nine month leases. Yeah. And a lot of times when that happens, it tends to uh, misalign, misconstrued, during the months, yeah, right? So the years you're when saying, people are usually high. You're saying that because of there's a, a demand of particular length of lease, three to six months lease in particular, that that's skewing the data as far as the actual rent price. For sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing an entirely new class of buyers or renters mm -hmm. that we've never seen before, right? I yeah. mean, it's this huge uptick in individuals looking for short term leases because. And why like, is that? Why well, is it's that? because it's transitory period, right. right? Because they're moving from one house to another. So, you, I mean, we're seeing hundreds, potentially even millions of Americans yeah. who sold their house during this market and are struggling to find a new place to live. Right. So now let's go and transition into, okay, what can change all that? We'll, we'll continue to see an uptick and increase of rent. And of course, we know that this isn't going to happen forever. So really the better way to frame this is, are we going to see a continuing increase for the next two to three years? Or are we going to see a cool down? Now, the data that, that supports that we're going to see a cool down of rent prices is the following. And that is that the eviction moratorium, the CDC, Center for Disease Control Moratorium, is set to end at the end of this 
uh, month, which means that we may see some potential increase in evictions. And already there are some data analysts that are predicting that we may see potentially 500,000 new evictions in the next two months. Now, just to give you a frame of reference, in 2016, just to serve as a benchmark, there were 2.35 million evictions in 2016 alone. Now, so if you kind of exp extrapolate that data, 500,000 evictions in the span of two years, you know, you do the math, it's about 43% increase based on the, the mm -hmm. benchmark. So a lot of analysts are saying, yes, we are gonna see more evictions. That could potentially lead to A, additional vacancies that would either cool down the rental prices, or we may see landlords that say, you know what, I'm done with this rental game, I'm gonna sell. And that may just add inventory to the overall sales housing market, or housing right. market sales activity. So there, that's one theory, or that's at least one and, possible and, and, outcome. And the media is saying that that's the reason why rents are gonna cool down? Well, that's well, that's basically my analyze or analysis as far as what's what's going to potentially happen if there were to be an eviction. For sure. Well, it's not a surprise that I'm questioning what the media is saying oh, about sure. the housing market. Yeah. I think a lot of smarter investors who've been in the game a long time question very strongly what the media says about the housing market. Yeah, I mean, at CNBC is now saying there's 11.5 sure. million million renters that are still behind their rent. Mm -hmm. uh, estimated 1.2 million. Uh, tenants who can who would likely get uh, evicted in the next two months. I think the biggest problem that we're going to see is more so in affordable housing because a lot of these yeah. individuals who are going to leave their units, and displacements is what we sure. call them. Because in my opinion, and if anything, that actually will increase the rent even more. Because think about if you have all these displacements and you talk about what you just said about landlords, you know, putting the houses on the market because they're like, you know what. I don't want to be a landlord anymore. Yeah. I just want to sell the thing, liquidate, and you know, take care of my investments. Well, if that's the case, you're taking a unit out of the market. You're sure. taking something that's in the inventory out of the inventory, mm -hmm. and that actually leaves less options for individuals right, who that, do want to rent. But hold on. But wouldn't that may, mean that there's more housing available for, for those who would have been buyers, therefore less buyers are going to turn into renters? You see what I mean? It's kind of like a sure. chicken and exit situation. Sure. So, I mean, it's, I mean, right now, undoubtedly, we are, we are going to see evictions. Mm -hmm. The question of will we see an eviction wave the answer is yes. Here's why I say that, because unemployment is still rather higher than pre-pandemic levels. Uh, Pre-pandemic levels, I believe we were at 4%, 3.5%. We're still hovering around 6 or 7%. Um, I don't have the exact data in front of me right now. So where would all the uh, unemployed people do? You know, if they can't make their rent payments, we're going to see evictions. Right. We're going to see well, the, some that consolidation. Was, that was exactly my point with terms yeah. of affordable housing. Because, yeah. you know, for the last two years, 18 months, we've seen rents go up and up and up. And what I've been saying for the last yeah. 18 months, what have we been saying? Is that, well, housing prices are skyrocketing. Rents are right. skyrocketing. 100%. And if I don't, you know, if I remember correctly, income hasn't skyrocketed no. at all. So, I mean, what, 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 you know, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? But there is an argument to be made that wages are going up due to the fact that less people are wanting to work right now. Um, and, and we haven't even talked about government subsidies, which, you know, obviously you guys know our thoughts on that. But um, as far as what the market would do, I believe, we're going we're gonna to see some evictions. Now, here's the counter, uh, I guess, data. The data that will perhaps say, well, this is wrong, is that... Uh, the federal government spent $45 billion on federal subsidies to help with rental assistance. Now, the issue with that, however, is that states that are inefficient, you know, you know how government can be, really slow, uh, it, they're, they're not quick enough to, to dish out all these payments to landlords and renters. That might be the problem. So it really comes down to will the rental assistance mm -hmm. actually have, have had a positive impact, impact, yes or no? That could definitely help or at least determine what the eviction wave could look like. Is it gonna be a tsunami or is it just a you know a little trickle wave? Mm -hmm. Well, again, I mean, I think it's just a domino effect. Yeah. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, I think a lot of, cause right now home ownership rates are around 68%, which is really high. Very, very right. high. Really, we really talking high. Yeah. 2006, 2007 levels. But the difference between now and then, 2006, 2007 is, well, now we don't see as many abandoned homes. You know, back then you had right. one individual who had six mortgages, four mortgages, and not only that, you had individuals who, once they can afford to pay their mortgage, they just picked up town and left, yeah. right? We're not exactly seeing the same picture anymore, no. right? So at the end of the day, I think it's really gonna be interesting to see how the market shifts. If anything, I think rents will, will cool down just for the just fact that, you know, a lot of landlords in the market will realize, well, income isn't as high as we thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. This trend isn't as hot as we thought it was gonna be. Right. And there's actually a lot more people who can't afford these prices than we thought. Right. So, 
you know, in my opinion, we'll see what happens. I think if governments do step in for that matter, yeah. it is actually going to artificially keep rents pretty high. Yeah. And we don't want that happening. Yeah. So as soon as the government subsidies, as far as unemployment benefits, um, you know, these rental assistance, uh, the weekly paychecks, I mean, all these, you know, stimulus payments, once they kind of drown out, you know, once they've kind of left and, and you know, we see less of that. Yeah, we're, we're going to see the, the true color of what, what could potentially happen with the rental market. I do believe that we're going to see a, a slight cooling in the rental prices. Long term wise, I do. I, I continue to see the rents going up. There, I mean, you see the Generation Z coming in. Uh, less millennials want to buy homes, although Generation Z slightly different. They do want to mm -hmm. buy homes. Um, but uh, yeah, I do see the rental rates coming down, and I also potentially see new inventories coming in thanks to landlords that are going to decide to put their. So property you're in the saying, market. so you're saying that rents are going to cool off for a little bit, and then just, they're going to go back up. I think so. In the next five years or more, we're going to see the rent rates continue to climb and, and increase. But that all depends on, of course, um, you know, all real estate is local, right? We're probably going to see some cool, continuing cool, cooling off in some of these blue states. But I think we're going to see some increases in place, places like Florida, Texas, uh, Arizona, and Nevada will continue to see increase, including Idaho. We'll see continuous, uh, continuous uh, rent increase over the next five years. Yeah, I and mean, I think that leads us to a question is, are we overbuilding, right? Because yeah. we're seeing a lot of construction, we're seeing a lot of development come back, especially yeah. with real estate. I mean, we're big time developers as well in the state of Florida. So, you know, that's the question at hand, right? Are we yeah. overbuilding? But I think that's a question for another video. Absolutely. So with that being said, do you guys agree? Do you guys don't? I mean, we've done, we spent quite a bit of time, both Daniel and I probably combined hours of research in in figuring this out and really helping you guys decide uh, what to do with your investments as well as uh, just you know fun deciding financially what to do. So sure. that being said, guys, check out some of the other videos we have. Catch the next video. We're gonna have some more housing market for you guys. And so, also share this video yeah. because Absolutely. as much as you know, we've yes. talked about this, that's how we really learn by not only talking to one another, but talking to our other friends who are real estate investors as well yeah. and getting their opinion. So I encourage you guys yes. to share this video, make this a jumping off point in terms of your discussion. And of course, yeah. leave your thoughts in the comment yeah. section below. Share this on the forums, share this on your social media. If you have other real estate investors that you're friends with, share this video because uh, we want to get for the sure. data as as much as uh, out there as much as possible. So with that said guys, thank you for watching and yep. we'll see you in the next one. All right, see ya.